Hi, this is Jamie Haddad, my good buddy Matt Kilmer, and um, we're going to demonstrate some traditional, well, I guess nothing about it's traditional. We stop and think about it, because this isn't a traditional instrument. This is a collaborative effort by uh, my good buddy and tremendous sculptor Frank Giorgini and myself. And, um, God, we first took this to a Percussive Art Society convention about over 20 years ago, and they kind of laughed at us thinking that the Americans and the people around the world were really just interested in Western percussion and not going to really move into another zone. And um, well, we all know they were wrong. And uh, these instruments are heard, they're, it's ubiquitous. You find them everywhere, people are playing them, and the scholarly approach that a lot of people have taken in the mixture of cultures is just, you know, it's bringing the planet to a new evolution at this point in time through music. and. Uh, we're going for the ride. We're digging it. So this Hajini drum has, it's connected by this elbow. This brace was made. This brace came about because I know my friend Joe Lovano, when he used to play saxophone, he used to bend his necks, he used to play so strong. And I knew when we were making it, we needed to have a brace in there, otherwise we'd split these, this elbow apart. It's hollow, one side can tune the other. And you get a rubbing sound here, finger sound here. You can play like that. Uh, and now I'm going to demonstrate the instrument with it being acoustic. With just using 257s, you might have different mics. You might have more expensive mics. 57s are kind of foolproof in a way. They have a narrow uh, uh, focus for their sound, so other things don't bleed into it. As, as easily as you do with some other microphones. And I also have some DPA microphones inside of this. These do the job like no other I, I've tried. I've tried a lot. And um, well, let me just play for you. Enough of that. And here we go. Now I'm going to play the same instrument with the internal mics. Now, the, what you don't get with the external mics is just one note, and that's what, because there's no way to port it. So if you close the one side and you hit the other side, there's a note. Yeah. That, without a microphone, mo, you wouldn't get that. Through EQ, I used to play with a volume pedal too on Paul Simon's gig. Uh, I played with a volume pedal which had a, a spring part on it that I knew once I got to a certain point that if I went past it, I would cause feedback. And with the feedback and EQing your rig, you could get this thing to start singing from this far away and you could control notes and it's just kind of like almost like a theremin or something. It's pretty bizarre. Not really, but it's that kind of spooky uh, when, you, when you get close to it and you're using that. And also, by having your hands on it, you can shape the sound so it's like, you know, that kind of stuff. You can really just do crazy, crazy things. Um, let's play. So, uh, you know, again, this is split, split finger technique, and I hadn't really talked much about it, but you know, anybody who studies tabla, mridangam, uh, kanjira, uh, gatam, clay pot, those styles of Indian uh, playing, uh, my particular technique and Matt's also, we, we came from, uh, um, he, was back, he was my student a, a long time ago back at Berkeley. He's gone on to study a lot of different things since then, but our, his initial initiation and mine too was into the South Indian split finger thing, which um, breaks, breaks your hands up, breaks your hand up into two parts so you get this kind of throw thing happening. And the forgotten players, you could also play with both hands like that. 
On this particular instrument, I play this hand like this. In this hand, I use like the heel toe kind of thing from conga drums or, or just straight. Again, the notes can come. Okay, like that. Popping. Okay. thank Matt. I want to thank all the memo here and uh, Steve Negosian for all their support and thank you.